Hi, I'm MC Jesse. 大家好，读你听二点零。今日继续读 Miguel de Cervantes 嘅 Don Quixote 同吉摩德啊，读到第七节，呢节叫做 Of the Second Sally of Our Worthy Knight Don Quixote of La Mancha。第二次冲刺啊，好期待呢个主角嘅反击啦，因为上一回咧佢嘅。休息緊嘅狀態咧，就俾屋企人燒書啦。佢所心愛嘅騎士精神咧，遭到物理上嘅破壞喎。咁究竟佢啲書俾人燒到七七八八嘅狀態，佢可唔可以重拾佢嘅自信呢？嚇、啊，我哋睇下呢一節當橋一提嘅第二次衝刺。跟住我哋交俾 Costa 同大家讀嚟聽。At this instant, Don Quixote began shouting out, "Here, here, valiant knights!" Here is need for you to put forth the might of your strong arms, for they of the court are gaining the mastery in the tourney. Called away by this noise and outcry, they proceeded no farther with the scrutiny of the remaining books, and so it is thought that the Carolia, the Lion of Spain, and the deeds of the Emperor written by Don Luis de Avila went to the fire unseen and unheard, for no doubt they were among those that remained. And perhaps, if the curate had seen them, they would not have undergone so severe a sentence. When they reached Don Quixote, he was already out of bed, and was still shouting and raving, and slashing and cutting all round, as wide awake as if he had never slept. They closed with him, and by force got him back to bed. And when he had become a little calm, addressing the curate, he said to him, "Of a truth, Signor Archbishop Turpin, it is a great disgrace for us." Who call ourselves the Twelve Peers so carelessly to allow the knights of the court to gain the victory in this tourney? We, the adventurers, having carried off the honour on the three former days. Hush, gossip," said the curate. "Please God, the luck may turn, and what is lost today may be won tomorrow. For the present, let your worship have a care of your health, for it seems to me that you are over fatigued, if not badly wounded." "Wounded? No," said Don Quixote. But bruised and battered, no doubt, for that bastard Don Roland has cudgelled me with the trunk of an old tree, and all for envy, because he sees that I alone rival him in his achievements. But I should not call myself Reynaldos of Montalvan did he not pay me for it, in spite of all his enchantments. As soon as I rise from this bed, for the present, let them bring me something to eat. For that I feel is that will be more to my purpose, and leave it to me to avenge myself. They did as he wished. They gave him something to eat, and once more he fell asleep, leaving them marvelling at his madness. That night, the housekeeper burned to ashes all the books that were in the yard and in the whole house, and some must have been consumed that deserve preservation in everlasting archives. But their fate and the laziness of the examiner did not permit it, and so in them was verified the proverb that the innocent suffer for the guilty. One of the remedies which the curate and the barber immediately applied to the friend's disorder was to wall up and plaster the room where the books were, so that when he got up he should not find them, and they might say that a magician had carried them off, room and all. And this was done with all dispatch. Two days later, Don Quixote got up, and the first thing he did was to go and look at his books, and not finding the room where he had left it, he wandered from side to side looking for it. He came to the place where the door used to be, and tried it with his hands, and turned and twisted his eyes in every direction without saying a word. But after a good while, he asked his housekeeper whereabouts was the room that held his books. The housekeeper, who had been already well instructed in what she was to answer, said, "What room or what nothing is it that your worship is looking for? There are neither room nor books in this house now, for the devil himself has carried all away." It was not the devil," said the niece, "but a magician who came on a cloud one night after the day you worship left this, and dismounting from a serpent that he rode, he entered the room, and what he did there I know not. But after a little while he made off, flying through the roof, and left the house full of smoke. And when we went to see what he had done, we saw neither book nor room. But we remember very well, the housekeeper and I. That on leaving, the old villain said in a loud voice that for a private grudge he owed the owner of the books and the room. He had done mischief in that house that would be discovered by and by. He said too that his name was the Sage Munnington. He must have said Friston," said Don Quixote. "I don't know whether he called himself Friston or Fritton," said the housekeeper. "I only know that his name ended with Tin." 
So it does, said Don Quixote, and he is a sage magician, a great enemy of mine, who has a spite against me because he knows by his arts and lore that in process of time I am to engage in single combat with a knight whom he prevents and that I am to conquer, and he will be unable to prevent me. And for this reason, he endeavors to do me all the ill turns that he can. But I promise him it will be hard for him to oppose or avoid what is decreed by heaven. Who doubts that, said the niece. But uncle, who mixes you up in these quarrels? Would it not be better to remain at peace in your own house instead of roaming the world looking for better bread than ever came of wheat, never reflecting that many go for wool and come back shorn? Oh, niece of mine, replied Don Quixote, how much astray art thou in thy reckoning? Ere they shear me, I shall have plucked away and stripped off the beards of all who dare to touch only the tip of a hair of mine. The two were unwilling to make any further answer, as they saw that his anger was kindling. In short, then, he remained at home fifteen days very quietly without showing any sign of a desire to take up with his former delusions. And during this time, he held lively discussions with his two gossips, the curate and a barber. On the point he maintained that knights errant were what the world stood most in need of, and that in him was to accomplish the revival of knight errantry. The curate sometimes contradicted him, sometimes agreed with him. For if he had not observed this precaution, he would have been unable to bring him to reason. Meanwhile, Don Quixote worked upon a farm labourer, a neighbour of his, an honest man, but with very little wit in his paint. In a word, he so talked him over, and with such persuasions and promises, that the poor clown made up his mind to sally forth with him and serve him as his squire. Don Quixote, among other things, told him he ought to be ready to go with him gladly, because any moment an adventure might occur that might win an island in the twinkling of an eye and leave him governor of it. On these and the like promises, Sancho Panza left wife and children and engaged himself as a squire to his neighbor. Don Quixote next said about getting some money and selling one thing and pawning another and making a bad bargain in every case. He got together a fair sum. He provided himself with a buckler, which he bagged as a loan from a friend, and restoring his battered helmet as best he could, he warned his squire Sancho of the day and hour he meant to set out, that he might provide himself with what he thought most needful. Above all, he charged him to take a forjas with him. The other said he would, and that he meant to take also a very good ass he had, as he was not much given to going on foot. About the ass, the Don Quixote hesitated a little, trying whether he could call to mind any knight errant taking with him an esquire mounted on ass back, but no instance occurred to his memory. For all that, however, he determined to take him, intending to furnish him with a more honourable mount when a chance of it presented itself, by appropriating the horse of the first discourteous knight he encountered. Himself he provided with shirts and such other things as he could, according to the advice the host had given him. All which being done without taking leave, Sancho Panza of his wife and children, or Don Quixote of his housekeeper and niece, they sallied forth unseen by anybody from the village one night and made such good way in the cause of it that by daylight they held themselves safe from discovery even should search be made for them. Sancho rode on his ass like a patriarch, with his avojas and porter, and longing to see himself soon governor of the island his master had promised him. Don Quixote decided upon taking the same route and road he had taken on his first journey, that over the Campo de Montiel, which he travelled with less discomfort than on the last occasion, for, as it was early morning and the rays of the sun fell on them obliquely, the heat did not distress them. And now said Sancho Panza to his master, Your worship will take care, Signor Knight Errant, not to forget about the island you have promised me, for be it ever so big, I'll be equal to governing it. To which Don Quixote replied, Thou must know, friend Sancho Panza, that it was a practice very much in vogue with the knights errant of old to make the squires governors of the islands or kingdoms they won, and I am determined that there shall be no failure on my part in so liberal a custom. On the contrary, I mean to improve upon it, for they sometimes, and perhaps most frequently, waited until their squires were old, and then when they had had enough of service and hard days and worse nights, they gave them some title or other, of count, or at the most marquis, of some valley or province more or less. But if thou livest and I live, 
it may well be that before six days are over, I may have won some kingdom that has others dependent upon it, which will be just a thing enable thee to be crowned king of one of them. Nor needest thou count this wonderful, for things and chances fall to the lot of such knights in ways so unexampled and unexpected that I might easily give thee even more than I promised thee. In that case, said Sancho Panza, if I should become a king by one of those miracles your worship speaks of, even Juana Gutierrez, my old woman, would come to be queen and my children invented. Well, who doubts it? said Don Quixote. I doubt it, replied Sancho Panza, because for my part I am persuaded that though God should shower down kingdoms upon earth, not one of them would fit the head of Mary Gutierrez. Let me tell you, Senor, she is not worth two Maravedis for a queen. Countess will fit her better, and that only with God's help. Leave it to God, Sancho, returned Don Quixote, for he will give her what suits her best. But do not undervalue thyself so much as to come to be content with anything less than being governor of a province. I will not, Senor, answered Sancho, especially as I have a man of such quality for a master in your worship, who will know how to give me all that will be suitable for me and that I can bear. 好，呢次就完啦。唔该晒 Costa， 销书呢个环节咧，似都影响唔到 Tonky 嗰条。啊，虽然佢唔知道佢啲书俾人烧咗，但系佢肯定知道佢啲书咧就系俾人偷咗嘅。根据佢嘅佢嘅侄女啦，佢啲书系俾一个神秘嘅魔术师偷咗。啊，一个咁样嘅大话，骑住个云彩咁样嚟偷嘅。咁但系 Tonky 嗰条咧都照单全收嘅。佢只系会将呢啲咁样嘅邪恶嘅势力咧，当做社会嘅不公义啦，吓，然之后咧到最后咧就会受到天谴，佢就系啲上天派嚟嘅使者啦。佢亦都系随万难咁咧，竟然就揾到佢嘅一个助手喎，吓就系佢个邻居啦。咁啊，佢邻居又竟然听信咗佢嘅说话，咁啊同佢一齐上路。咁当然啦，唔系无常嘅。呢、这個當 Kitty 咧就應承咗咧，係當佢作為一個騎士嚇，執行公義而贏取到任何嘅土地啊，任何嘅名銜，佢就會送俾呢個鄰居啦。阿山卓啊，新造啊，咁啊，山卓當然係照單全收啦嚇。仲要咧同阿當 Kitty 講啊，帶我老婆咧就誒個、呃、人品唔好啊，佢唔值得咁好啦咁樣。呢度就兩位就不停咁樣就自我感覺良好啦。叫做野笑嘅对话啦，吓、啊，我嚟睇下啲咩字。其实呢一节就冇咩字，主要就系一啲诶西班牙文啊、英文都冇翻译嘅。其中知道嘅字系 alforja，alforja，a l f o r j a，alforja， 西班牙文 j 就系法音系 h 啦，吓啲常识啦，吓、啊、名词嚟嘅 alforja， 意思系 saddle back，saddle back。Especially one made of leather， 即係啲皮製嘅布衣啦。嚇，呢布衣通常都係掛喺只馬上面，或者掛喺女仔上面，掛喺度嘅 saddle。OK， 咁我哋就今日講呢度，我哋下一次再同大家讀俾你聽。拜拜。If you like this video， make sure to comment, like, share and subscribe. Adios。